We said there are things that you must do for God to bring increase when you pray. We said some things to understand to position yourself for what? Increase. We said, look, you need to position yourself for increase. You don't wait for increase. You position yourself for what? Increase. I said, if you want God to increase you, then expect that God should increase you on daily basis. God wants to increase you on a daily basis. That should be your expectation. Is that true? If you don't expect it, you will never get it. If I want God to increase me, I should know that it is my redemptive right. This is what? It is my redemptive right to experience and enjoy increase. That I should know. Number two, it is my redemptive right. This is my what? For me to enjoy increase. It's my redemptive right as a child of God. It is my redemptive right to experience and enjoy what? Increase. In Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 2, it says, Look unto Abraham your father and Sarah that bear you, for I called him alone and blessed him and what? Increase him. As I said, every time God blesses you, he expects the next thing to be increased. Many are blessed, but they don't increase. But that's not God's plan. When God bless you, he expects you to do what? Increase. It's not enough to be blessed. How can you have one store? He said, God has blessed me with a store. And then two years, you still have one store. No, that's not increase. He bless you with a store. By next year, you should have another store. Do you understand now? Oh, God bless me with one million. Do you know God bless me with one million? But next year, you should have two million. Oh, I was blessed with one million. Then after a while, you say, I now have 500,000. No. God expects every blessing to do what? To increase. Do you know God bless me with so so amount? The next thing you should expect is what? Increase. If you are blessed with that amount and then there's no increase, then something is wrong. Do you understand what I'm saying? Glory to God. As a covenant child, you are supposed to be going from one level to another. He said, look unto Abraham. Abraham grew to old age. In Exodus chapter 1 verse 7, and the children of Israel were fruitful. Were what? And increased abundant. Do you understand? I see how it goes. And then they were fruitful. That's blessing. And increased abundant and multiplied. And works exceedingly mighty. And the land was what? Filled with them. That's what God expects for you and I to enjoy Next chapter 1 verse 12, the GNT version says, but the more the Egyptians oppressed the Israelites, the more they increased in number. So don't tell me the devil is the reason why you're not going forward. Now right, look at the scripture. Exodus 1 12. <laughs> Shall we read together? The more the Egyptians oppressed the Israelites, the more they do what? So don't tell me the reason why you're not spread is because they're oppressing you. That's a lie. It's because you lack knowledge. The more they oppress them, the more they increased. So that somebody is oppressing you does not bring reduction. I prepared to before you the press of your heart. So don't tell me the witches are the reason why you're not increasing. Those are lazy excuses. The more they oppress them, the more they increase. So I'll increase. In respect of any oppression. The more they oppress them, the more they increase. Mm. The enemies cannot stop your increase. Hmm? God did it for them. He will do it for salvation. He will do it for you. Yeah. If you're a believer, shall they believe in a man? Yeah. We'll keep increasing. We'll multiply. We'll be exceedingly mighty. Fill the nations of the earth. So also will your life and ministry and business and career be in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Because we are the seed of Abraham by redemption. By what? Therefore, we're entitled to enjoy increase. On every side. Galatians 3, 7, 9, 13, and 14. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of what? Abraham. So then, verse 9, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful who? Abraham. Verse 13. Christ has redeemed from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us, for it is really curse everyone that hanging upon a tree. That the blessing of who? Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Hmm? God has so much for you and I. So stop settling for small things. So I hear. He wants to increase you. It's your redemptive right. Stop settling for mediocrity. Stop giving excuses why you are not going forward. 
I will show you. He said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and as he that the heart of man, what God has prepared for them that what? So you have not started at all. Eyes have not seen. Where you are now is too small compared to what God has for you. First Corinthians 2, 9. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask for what? God can do so much. So why are you settling for small things? Why stay in one room for five years? Hey! Why stay in one room for five years? One room for five years. For what? One room, five years. No! It's not correct. No! It's not correct. Get angry. One room for five years. What are you talking about? You can start with one room, but you are not going to stay in one room for five years. It's not biblical. Is that what? So if you stay in one room for five years, something has gone wrong. You are not permitted to stay in a three-bedroom flat for five years. Hey! Something has gone what? Wrong. Something has gone wrong. One room for five years, it's not a devil. Something has gone wrong. One room. Every year, I increase. Every year, I increase. That's the Bible. If you don't think it, you won't become it. If you don't see it, you can't catch it. How can you live? You get one store last year, one store this year, then you are your day. Ah! So even from three stores, you're coming to one. Uh, that one is an anathema. From three stores, you're not coming back to one. No, now from one store to three, not three to one. He said economy. It's not economy. Listen. Bible is so real. The income of this church grew in the midst of depression. If I don't see it, it will never happen. The reason why your income went down is because you have been complaining of seeing it. You keep talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. See it. What I say? If you stop talking what you see and you start talking what is written, then what is written will overtake what you are seeing. Stop talking what is happening in the society. Start talking what God has said. Some saying things are tough. No! You know, thinking is invisible. Thinking is what? Prayer is visible. You utter words. But thinking is invisible. So most times we pray with our mind, God increase me. Increase me. But on the inside, hey, how will it happen now? The moment your thinking contradicts what you're praying, it will stop the flow. And thinking is on the inside. And 90% of our problem comes from the invisible. We think contrary to what we say. Before people say, look, I want God. I know God is going to bless me. God is going to increase me. But after you go on your own, you say, how will I increase? Hey. With all the things happening in Nigeria. Hey. With all this happening in my country. Is it possible? Father, in the name of Jesus, it's not possible, though. That tough has stopped the flow. Because God is able to do all that you ask or think. So the more you are thinking contradicts what you are asking, God will not do it. Hmm? So watch what is going on on the inside. Let me put the NIV. You get the NIV. Look at the NIV. Of Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or what? According to his power that is at work within us. So your imagination must also be in line with what you are praying. Hello. Hello. And some things to do to commit God for increase when we pray. There are things you need to do. What are the things I need to do to commit him for what? For increase. I said, number one, never despise the little available. Never despise the little available. How many want God to increase them? How many want God to increase them? Avoid wasting. Avoid what? The little available. Avoid wasting the little available. If you want God to increase you, then avoid wasting what is in your hands. Some people waste the little available just because it is not sufficient for what they want to use it for. In 2 Kings chapter 4, 1 to 7, you will discover there was a widow who was indebted. Her husband was indebted. Her husband was what? 
And they came to carry her two children to pass collateral. And Elisha, a man of God, came to her and said, What hast thou in the house? She said, Nothing. In verse 2, precisely, he said, Nothing. I don't have anything. And Elijah said, No, you have something. She said, Yes, I have a pot of oil. It was that little oil that God used to bring her out of her challenges. Is somebody get what I'm saying now? Jesus also had a challenge in John chapter 6. If you read from verse 5, the Bible said, Mortal came to him with only five loaves and two fishes in the wilderness to feed them. And Jesus did not despise the five loaves. Did not did what? He did not throw away the five loaves. It was from the five loaves and two fishes he turned his story around. That 1,000 in your hand that you are taking to buy the chart card is in that 1,000 naira that lies the 1 billion you're looking for. This small thing, this small thing, is it what I will use? And you bought a pancake instead of starting a business with it. End up as a cake for people to eat. You end as cake. God will never increase what you throw away. Anything you waste will never increase. Hello? No matter how much a waster has, it is never enough. They believe in spending everything as it comes to their hand. The first sign to know a waster is anything that comes to their hand, they spend it. When you see somebody spend everything that comes to their hand, they are wasters. They are what? Wasters. Wasters spend everything they have. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 20. Want to go? There is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise. But a foolish man spent it all. Now let me use the Amplified Classic. Listen carefully. It said, there are precious treasures and oil in the dwelling of the wise. But a self-confident foolish man swallows it up and wastes it. Do you hear that? Every poor man is a waster. To shock you. The biggest wasters in the world are from this part of the world. Yet we are complaining. Things are not working, you know. <laughs> God will never increase a waster. And I'll tell you avenues of waste. Avenues of what? I'll tell you the avenues of waste. Avenues of what? I'll show you the avenues of waste. A. The avenues of what? A. Living luxurious and extravagant lifestyle when you don't have enough. Living luxurious and what? Extravagant lifestyle when you don't have enough. Living luxurious and what? Extravagant lifestyle when you don't have enough. It is not a sin to enjoy yourself if you can afford it and not put yourself under pressure. I repeat, it is not a sin to do what? Enjoy yourself if you can afford it and not put yourself under pressure and don't disturb people. Proverbs 21, 17, Passion Translation says, to love pleasure for pleasure's sake will introduce you to poverty. Indulging in a state of luxury will never make you wealthy. Can you say that love and pleasure shall be a poor man? He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. Amen? He said, to love pleasure for pleasure's sake will what? Introduce you to poverty. Indulging in a self of luxury will never make you wealthy. Mm. Mm -mm. It's not a sin to enjoy life, but don't enjoy life at the expense. Don't put yourself under pressure. Don't put yourself under. Somebody came to me in this church and said, he need 400,000 for house rent. So I said, give him 250. He said, who will give him the rest? I said, I'm not the one that got the house for him. <laughs> <laughs> he said, where will he get the rest? Now, he loves pleasure but doesn't have the money for it. So he should go for the one he can afford. He wants enjoyment but doesn't have the money. 
That's it. It's not a sin to enjoy your life, but don't put yourself under pressure. So I hear. I have the 400 to give him, but I intentionally did it. I did it on the purpose. Tried to tell him, boy, cut down. Have a way I pass message. I won't talk, but I pass message to you. Cut down. Don't give yourself pressure. I've never been under pressure. I've stayed in this ministry in one room as a married man. You don't have an investment. No thing with your business. You want God to increase. No tin. You are busy buying clothes. Clothes has no value. Buy the best clothes. Sew it now. Go and sell it. It will come down in price. Sew any cloth. Buy it 50 million. Go to sell it as, and they'll say, ah, madam, you've sewn it 30 million. Every cloth, once you carry it for, to sell, it, the price must come down. So cloth has no value. You don't have an investment. You're buying cloth up and down. What are you saving yourself? What we call increase? Have you seen where God increased cloth? Read your Bible. Do you see where God increased cloth? Okay. It doesn't even increase cars. <laughs> Increases investment. Increase what? Oh God, increase me. You don't have anything as a point of contact. He said, Father, these are my cloth. He said, cloth, sell them, bring the money and increase it. B. Avenue of what? Ways is addiction to tradition. Addiction to what? Mark 7, 9 and 13. And he said unto them, full well, you reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own tradition. Verse 13. Making the word of God of none effect through your word, which you have delivered and many sort of things do ye. Tradition. For instance, now we have second burial, extravagant burial ceremonies. Man that you know build a house for, who could not pay hospital bill, he dies now. You now do a big ceremony. Those are waste. Those are what? When he was alive, they did not pay hospital bill. The whole family never held one meeting to pay hospital bill. When the man dies now, the whole family meeting to give him a befitting burial. Thank you. When he had no befitting hospital bill. So many ways they are God given resources through these ungodly ventures and shut the doors of increase. They even do second burial, second burial ceremony. Even believers do it. They become poor and be blaming the devil. So we are going to do a special memorial service of our mother who had died 40 years ago. <laughs> God said, you mean the one I gave to you is now for memorial service. Yeah, that man who did memorial service has not paid school fees on one living child though. He's doing memorial service. C, gambling. What did I say? Gambling. Another venue of ways is what? Gambling. <laughs> is what? Is, is gambling. All this bet, bet is gambling. It's gambling. It's pool in modern form. It's pool in modern. And since history, no gambler has ever been great. Even those who win billions of dollars, they end up poor. Check history. No gambler has ever been rich. Never. All gamblers are always broke. I'm talking to you now. There are some believers here who hear them and still play gamble. Even now. They say, boy, I'm believing God for gambling. No matter the Type of gambling is an express road to empty life. Stop gambling. Stop what? No responsible man gambles. Gambling is a sign of irresponsibility. Hey! It's a sign of laziness. Trying to get money without investing. God will not increase gambling. Will not increase what? Gambling. It is pool. If your father played pool. The only modernized pool. The only modernized what? It's football now. It doesn't say it's sports they use. It's a pool. It's a Arsenal. Hey, one cut. That... <laughs> <laughs> now, 
in the modern time, they just removed the pool and brought it. And all the matter, now, now there are so many home manner of beds. They have this bed, this bed, is this bed, this bed. And they use footballers to advertise. They say, you see, this one will come out, this footballer will come out. I'm telling you, if you do like this, you're, you're a king. How many of you are? <laughs> God will not decrease you like that. Stop those nonsense. Go and do legitimate business, amen. So I hear. D. <laughs> I'm telling you reality, you want to increase. You want what? Increase. Comparison and competition. Comparison and competition. If you want God to increase you, and have any of waste. And have any of waste. Comparison and what? Some Christians compare and compete among themselves. Who will lavish more in partying in quotes. They say, Do you know my wedding? This wedding, I go be that sister last month. Who is competing with you? The last wedding you attended. Now, picture the wedding gown. Why do you remember anyone? It will shock you. You will remember the look of the wedding gown. Okay, look at. What did I wear last Sunday? Nobody will remember. Except you have no job. <laughs> <laughs> so why kill yourself over nothing? If I wear this shoe next week, you will not remember. My friend, don't kill yourself and compare yourself with any birth. You are just who you are. Don't stress your life over nonsense. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and verse 12, that we shall only together, for we dare not make ourselves of the number, or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Why are you comparing yourself with somebody else? Somebody wear a watch, you want to wear the same watch. Somebody bought a car, you can't sleep again and say, I must buy that car. Boy, you want to kill yourself? I've never thought of what anybody has is your business. Watch is watch. As far as it gives you time. Correct time. If you have the money, no problem, but never compare yourself with anybody else. That you want to wear, I must buy a wedding gown shipped down from Illinois. That's the gown I'm going to buy. Do you know they said that gown is 40,000 pounds. So all your life savings to wear one gown on one day. <laughs> After that, you now say, no, I, need, I believe God for some breakthrough. You know, I believe God. God is a waster, waster, waster. Go, my friend. My friend, wear your size. Wear your what? Wear your size. Don't give yourself stress. God does not increase wasters. 